if you've been thinking about pursuing a healthcare provider path as a career and you've been thinking, okay, should I go the nurse practitioner route? Should I become a physician assistant or should I go the MD route? Then you have landed on the right video. In today's video, I'm going to be comparing and contrasting these three paths to becoming a healthcare provider and you know, be giving suggestions on what may be best for you depending on where you are in your life. Hey there, my name is Dr. Gertrude Nontra. I'm a professor of biology and I mentor students at my college. And this is one of the questions they come to me with is, you know, which career path do you think is best? Now, I think all of these career paths are great. To be honest with you, the NP path is wonderful, the PA path, the M, and then the MD path. All of them have great potential. All of them have a lot of employment opportunities. So I don't necessarily think anybody can go wrong on any of these paths, but they are different paths to do similar things. Albeit they have different roles in the healthcare provider team. Let's start by talking about the nurse practitioner path. So in order to become a nurse practitioner, you would need to have your bachelor's of science in nursing. Okay, you'd need to have your bachelor's in nursing to pursue that because an NP is usually a master's level, graduate level um, program. There's now what's known as the doctor of nursing practice. So um, I think in some schools it's a master's and then you get a doctor and then later on you can go get a doctorate um, but whatever it is you can become an you, in order to become a nurse practitioner you would need to have your Bachelor of Science in nursing now if you entered college to do nursing then most likely you're going to finish that nursing degree in four years right and then to get your nurse practitioner that's another two to three years depending on which path you choose so altogether you're looking at maybe six to seven years in order to complete your NP, your nurse practitioner degree, if you entered into the university to, you know, get your bachelor's in nursing. So let's talk about the physician's assistant path. So with a PA path, you also need a bachelor's degree. All right. And usually that would be a bachelor's degree in something that is science related. Now, I'm not saying that if you have some other major, you couldn't go to PA school. It would just mean you have to take all the prerequisites um, required for PA school. But most of the time, if you're like a bio major, like I used to be, then you would take a lot of the biology courses like anatomy and physiology you would also take um you know organic chemistry you would take calculus and, and math uh, calculus and physics sorry um and so it would be a good degree to have in order to enter pa school all right and so you'd have to look of course depending on what major you are you have to look up the requirements but usually these are the things that they would look for and to go into PA school, that's a two-year degree. You'd have to take the GRE exam, um, and that's a graduate record exam. And then once you take that, if you get a good score, the score that they are looking for alongside your grades from college, you would get into PA school, and that's two years. So from start to finish, the PA program takes six years. Now, to follow the MD path, that would be four years of your bachelor's degree and then four years of medical school. That's standard um, across the United States. And so that from start to finish is typically eight years. Now I know these are all conservative numbers because I'm assuming that you go directly from the bachelor's to the MP or from the bachelor's to the PA or from the bachelor's to the MD. But the truth is that, that that's not always the situation, right? You may take some time off to um, work a little bit. You may take some time off to take care of other things in life before you continue. So depending on your life situation, it could take a little longer. But this is what you could expect if you just did you know, from start to finish, you went through all these paths. Now let's also look at the average salaries of all these paths. I went online to salary.com and I looked up the salaries for a family nurse practitioner, a family um, physician assistant, and a family medicine doctor, okay? On average in the US, an MP would make 
$109,630, okay? A PA would make an average of $95,297. And then a an MD, a family, um, a family doctor would make $206,840. Now, of course, these are average numbers, which means some people make below that, some people make above that. Of course, this is an average on, in, in all cases. It depends on where you live. It depends on who you work with. The salaries are going to be different, but these are the kind of salaries that you can expect. So as you can see, they're all well compensated jobs. Now, when people come to me and say, Dr. Nontra, which path do you think I should pursue? I think you should always take a lot of things into consideration. Of course, I, I, I give suggestions on, you know, on what you can think about. But to be honest, they're all great paths. They all pay really well. Obviously, the MDs make more than both paths, but it's still a lot of money. Um, what I would say is that I find that sometimes when students are older and are thinking about life, right? About, oh, I'm in my mid thirties or I'm, I'm already 40 years old and I don't want to um, have to finish med school and go through residency for three, four, five years before I finally start making money. Then, then I would suggest that they go the NP or the PA route just because yes, medical school and then residency, that is a long-term game. You're looking at eight years of finishing med school and getting your MD for sure. But remember as a resident, you still don't get paid as much as you know, the attending or somebody that has finished their residency. So you'll look again, depending on your specialty, you may be looking at three, four, five years of residency before you are act you actually start getting compensated at the level that I mentioned that. Okay. However, with PAs and NPs, they can start out once they're done and they've passed their exams, they start out at those levels. So in a, in a sense, right, the PAs and um, NPs end up making more money at the same level when they've all, they're all done, right? But ultimately in the long term, the MDs would make more. So it really depends on what you're looking at. If you just want to be done and not have to worry so much about going through, you know, residency and all that, then the PA or the NP path would be great. Another thing that sometimes people think about is autonomy. Like, am I going to be able to prescribe and diagnose people? As far as I know, um, PAs and NPs depending on the state can diagnose conditions and manage those conditions but then typically would have to refer to a specialist of course for um, more complex issues that need to be handled by a medical specialist um, this is why a lot of the time you'll find for instance family uh, nurse practitioners uh, work a lot in a clinic setting where uh, you know work a lot maybe in the emergency room setting but not necessarily in surgery however pas um, tend to work more in a surgical setting. Um, still, they have to um, uh, they have to uh, basically defer. I don't like to use that word, but because I'm lacking a good word, they will have to um, defer it to the surgeon who's in charge of the medical ca of the case. And so um, there's that, right? So ultimately, uh, I don't think any one of them is necessarily higher, all right? Because I think in medicine, people like to play that a lot. This is higher than that. Um, I, I just think there are different paths and you do different things and have different responsibilities and everybody should take pride in those paths and enjoy it. Now, another thing to consider is in order to get into med school, you do have to take what's known as the MCAT exam, the notorious MCAT exam, which is super hard. Um, uh, and so that's something also to prepare for. Sometimes people don't get the, the, the best grade the first time, and so they have to take it again, and that could be taking up time. And so if you feel like you don't want to waste your time, and I don't think it's a waste of time, it's a learning experience, but you don't want to spend your time taking 
taking M the MCAT and having to retake it over and over again. Again, the PA and NP paths are still great paths to pursue that will give you the chance to practice and be the provider that you want to be. Those are my comparisons on the MP path, the PA path, and the MD path. They're all great paths. And if you as a student want to pursue them, I say go for it. It depends on your goals. It depends on what, you know, where you want to invest your time. But ultimately, it comes down to the fact that they're all great career paths.